Hey, welcome back to Basin Motorsports. So today we're gonna to work on the Gray Lady again. I've got a new set of seals for the doors, the hatch, and the window rub rubbers. Now with the El Camino in a great place, it's time to get back home to the home garage and get back on the Gray Lady to get it ready to go for sale later this year. So one of the things I definitely need to do is replace these old busted up seals. So now when I got this car, I can tell you these seals are haggard. Uh, they are full of silicone and they really need to be replaced. Thankfully, putting on a set of seals is not something that's going to take long to do. So if you've already seen me do it on the wide body, you know this doesn't take very long. It's a matter of getting the old ones off, getting the uh, trim pieces out of the way and popping the new ones on. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got the new one here. I need to cut it to length after I take off all the pieces, and get everything out of the way. All right, so your seals are definitely gonna be covered by everything. You can see that these ones have been plenty of silicone on them, but I've already got the, the uh, scuff plate out of the way because I was working on something else. I've got the dash side lower out of the way, so now I just need to take off the A-pillar piece here, which is a couple screws and it pops off. I need to take off the headliner trim, which is right here. This just pops off and then I can leave this back piece in the way. If I want to, I can take off this seat belt here to get it out of the way because I'm going to take it off anyway later. So I can just take the seat belt down, uh, take this piece loose, a couple of screws, and then I can easily get down into that seal. So in order to pop these pieces off, you've got your headliner piece, just two metal clips. So you can just take this, pry it down this way. It'll pop out. Next is your A pillar. So you've got one screw at the base. You've got another one at the midpoint, and then double check, you may have one up here under the windshield molding. You can see there's a screw. Now mine did not have a screw in that, but don't pull on it, uh, pop the molding loose, which is this. So you can see here's your sun visor. You can pop this clip loose and check to see if you have a screw in there or not. If you don't, you can take it out. If you do, take the screw out before you take the a pillar out. Now on the back again, you've got a screw down here. You've got a screw up to here, this side. And then the seat belt is a T50 that comes out. So that's just a bolt here. So that's a T50. You can take that out and get it out of the way. And then this will kind of pop out of the way a little bit. All right, so at this point, it's a matter of taking everything apart. Now, there is one more screw that I didn't mention is behind your seat belt buckle. But once you take that T50 bolt out, you'll see where it is. It's just another Phillips, just a small one. Pop it out, but then this piece over here comes out easy. Next step is to get rid of, of the seal itself. So once you get one, get rid of the seal, you can basically just pop it up. It should be two halves, so you can just take it and kind of pull it, take it all the way off. As you can see, this one has a ton of silicone on it. Um, so apparently the owner thought they would just get by with a, with a uh, big mess of silicone. Now the placement of this joint here, um, you can see it's right by the seat. It's really going to be kind of up to you to where you want to put that at. You can put it back in the same exact spot. The 80, the wide body, uh, it was towards the front of the door. And I can tell you, I don't really think there's a lot of performance advantage uh, as long as you keep it kind of on the flat down here. So just pick where you want to do it. You can do it in the middle of the door. You could do it towards the rear, towards the front. I think it's going to really be up to you. Just make sure they overlap. Uh, and I showed you that in the wide body piece, but I'll do it again here. So I'm going to strip this off. I'm going to start the, uh, the new one on there and then get it all the way around till it almost, where it touches and then I'll show you how to cut it. And it's really simple after that. Okay, so before you put your new seal on, one thing I'd recommend is taking just some window cleaner or just something and cleaning up the whole flange there. That way you don't trap dirt behind the new seal. Uh, it's very simple to do. Spray it on, wipe it off. Uh, this had a lot of dirt behind it, especially on the bottom, just because it's an old car. So take take a minute, clean it off with some uh, glass cleaner, something simple like that. Wipe it down, and then you can go ahead and put your new seal on. All right. So when you take off your A pillar, you're going to have four screws. You're going to have one in the base, one at the top. This is for the windshield itself. You can see there's a screw hole here. And then there's going to be a boss up here. Now, someone has taken this off previously, and you can see they have snapped off a little tab. This goes on the side of your headliner. So if you think of it this way, you've got the base going up, your windshield, and then you've got your side piece here going down over the door. And just remember, two and two will get that out. 
once you have the new seal put all the way on, you're going to get around all the way around to where it comes and it's going to have a little bit extra length. Remember, you're going to take this where they're going to meet. You're going to cut it roughly about a quarter inch long so it's over. And then you're going to take that other piece. You're going to kind of snake it in, butt them together, kind of like this, butt them together. And then you're going to put down the extra material. What that does is going to make sure that seal forces itself together. And that way you don't have to worry about later on uh, it, it pulling itself apart, start to have a wind noise, water issues or anything else. Cut it a little long. And if you don't know what a quarter inch, just cut it a little bit long. Try it. If it's really hard to go on, maybe take just a little bit off. Remember, it's got a metal insert in this, so you're going to need some good snips, either some tin snips, something like that. So you're going to need it just to kind of nibble it, nibble it apart, extra little long, force it together. And then when you're done, you don't have to worry about the wind noise or the seals anymore. Now, once you have it cut and all fit in place, the next thing is just to put everything back together. Now, of course, with the gray lady, I am going to take everything out and replace the carpet. I'm going to uh, fix the scuff plates. All the moldings, everything else. So at this point, I'm not going to put everything back in. If this is the only thing you had to do, the uh, reinstallation is everything you're going to put back in. Uh, put in your quarter window there. So you've got two screws, uh, the quarter panel. You've got the screw under the seatbelt buckle. You've got the seatbelt buckle itself. Again, T50 on that for the socket. Uh, you can then put in your uh, kick plate, your A-pillar. Remember, two screws in the bottom, two screws at the top. And then snap in all of your uh, door molding up top or the headliner and then the one across the windshield. At that point, you're done. You can then stand back. You've done a great job and everything's done. One last thing you can check is going to be is if you need to send new bushings. Now with the gray lady, unfortunately, how much that door moves up and down means this door needs a set of bushings on it. So that'll be a future project. Probably when I'm doing the wrap, I will do it because I'll have a fender off. I'll probably do it at that point. I will change the bushings on this versus doing it all with the door on. I'll do, take the easy way with the fender off. So from that point on, now I've got to do the passenger side door. So I'm not going to film that because it's the same as this. Screws, panels, everything else comes off. And then we're going to jump right back into the hatchback. All right, so we're going to move back around to the hatchback now. When you saw me do the trunk on the coupe, you know that there's no interior panels that kind of get in the way. On the hatchback, it actually has interior panels all in the back from around the edges all the way to the top. So on this, really just take your time, take out all the fasteners on them, set them aside in order, and then everything will become nice and loose that you can again get the old uh, one off and the new seal to go back on. Now this seal again had a ton of silicone at the bottom. So whoever it was on this car before loved silicone trying to get stuff to seal rather than actually buy a new seal. You can see there was this amount of silicone in there that almost is between them and these were two were together. So they were kind of smashed together and then all that silicone was over top. But thankfully we're going to get rid of all of this right now. Now before you put your seal on go ahead and clean off the flange all the way around. You might want to take your shot back on the top up there, get it cleaned, and then you can just use some glass cleaner and a paper towel, get the surface cleaned all the way around. That way you're not trapping dirt under the new seal. Putting the new seal on is pretty straightforward. You want to start uh, right here at the striker itself, work yourself around one way. If you want to do left to right, right to left, however you want to do it. But the one thing you want to make sure of is that the seal, when it's not, comes out and it goes outboard. Now the edge of your seal, you can kind of see that it's got a profile and you want that to be pointed out. That will deflect water from coming out or in. So when you put your seal on, just make sure that this comes up and this little tip here points outboard instead of in. Like on the door seal, you're going to get this around where it's going to come around. It's going to be long. So you're going to cut this approximately a quarter inch long. Just cut it straight off and then you can butt the ends together and then feed this extra little bit back. That way you keep tension right here on this edge and then you don't have to worry about it getting some water or anything else in there. Once you have the seal all the way put on, at that point you can just double check yourself make sure it's seated well all the way around. Everything looks great. Go ahead and take your screws, put them all back in your, your panels themselves to make sure you didn't lose any. And then at that point, you can go ahead and shut your hatchback down and everything's going to seal very well. 
Now the kit I did buy does come with uh, window run rubbers, but at this point I'm not going to put those on. It's a little bit different, it's a little bit more to get involved with, and I don't have really have the space to store parts because when I take stuff off, I don't want to have to put it right back on to take it back off later for the vinyl wrap. So I'm going to leave those for now, but you've already seen it done on the wide body, so at that point if you have any questions, I'll throw a link up to uh, putting those in. If you need to put them in immediately, you'll at least have something, otherwise I'll get to them on the Great Lady eventually. But that's it guys, that's putting in door seals and a hatchback seal. The hatch and the trunk are pretty much the same, at least the same other than you need to take panels uh, loose in order to get it on the hatchback trunk. You don't have to, but butting it up and making sure the tip of it points out is the same on the coupe or the hatchback. So if you have any questions, uh, just you know where to drop them, drop them down in the comments or you can send me a private message over on Instagram, Facebook, anything like that. Otherwise guys, keep modifying those Mustangs, keep making them great again. And I will see you next time. So Basin Motorsports and Canaan, we're out.